Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi. Uh, we are here with the part two of the trilogy of videos about the effect of intensity detected due to Doppler effect. So we were discussing the problem from Pathfinder book uh, on the uh, intensity calculation during the Doppler effect situation. So this is the part B. So just in case you have not yet watched the part A description of this particular problem, uh, please uh, pause the video here. Uh, we would be taking some of the notes that we derived in the part A uh, during the problem B of this particular video. So uh, in case you have not watched it, uh, I would like you to go to the links in the description here and then finish that video and do come back. So for those people who have already watched part A, right, if they want would like to try the part B where the point source is moving with a constant velocity Vs towards the stationary detector. Can you see that? Right. So he's talking about the detector being stationary this time, but the uh, point source is actually moving towards the detector. So again, he asked for the suitable expression for the intensity I of the sound received by the detector at a distance R from the source. So it points to be noted that the power of that source is P and it's a point source emitting sound isotropically in all directions. Okay. So uh, we are here to investigate the intensity detector. So I've already pre-drawn the situation this time you could see that the source initial position I have marked it as S naught. This is a T equal to zero, let's suppose. And by T is equal to T seconds, the source has moved towards left. So I'm considering the source to be moving towards left. So let me mark that uh, with an arrow here so that you don't get confused. So this is the direction of motion of the source here. Okay. Right. And uh, after T seconds, the source would be here. So what's the speciality of this T, right? Let's try to understand at source S, for dt seconds, there would be a spherical wave front that would be generated by the mouth of this source. Okay, there would be a small spherical wave front that would be generated. So that spherical wave front moves radially outward in all directions with a speed of sound c. Okay, by t seconds, the sound of the speed of sound is much higher than the speed of the source here. So it would encompass a bigger sphere, as you could see in t seconds. The sound that was emitted at t equal to zero would be here. But there is a catch here. The source won't be at the center of that sphere, right? So source would have moved forward to this position. So this is the position of the source at t seconds when the sphere of sound has reached this position. Okay. And what is the width of this particular thing, right? This is also not straightforward. Uh, like in the part A of the problem, if you carefully observe when the source was at rest and if it had emitted for dt seconds, this width was cdt, right? it won't be that straightforward because during the dt seconds itself, the source mouth would be moving. So what I did here is to investigate this width, which was uh, for dt seconds, the emission of sound in this zoom diagram. Okay. So let's say I've zoomed it. So again, I've taken the t equal to zero position and this time I waited only for dt seconds. So in dt seconds, okay, in dt seconds, if the source has moved from here to here, right? Source has moved from here to here, then the distance moved by the source would be Vs into dt. Okay, that's pretty simple. And the first pulse that would have uh, gone out, okay, the first pulse that would have gone out would go out into the air with the speed of c. So in the same dt seconds, it will cover this bigger distance, which is cdt. Okay, and therefore at the end of dt seconds, the pulse that would be coming out. I should have labeled it correctly. It's FDT pulse. Again, this, this analysis was also done in the part A of the problem. Okay. So the FDT the pulse would be just coming out at this particular instant. And you could see this width has now got compressed. Okay. So this width, which I depicted here of the radial width of that sphere would be simply CDT minus VSDT. So I marked it here. So if someone asks you, what is this width? Unlike in the part A, this would be a smaller width. And that is what we show in the diagrams where uh, the um, wavelength or the width of these particular um, the spheres would be reduced in, uh, when the detector is detecting them. And that would affect our calculation. One more geometry term that I have written is if the radius of this sphere on which this entire power that would be uh, associated, right, it would be spread on an R naught, that would be a CT radius. Okay. And this is VST. The expression that he asked in the problem, that is the catch, is that 
distance r should be me measured instantaneously so when the o detects a particular intensity he wants the expression not in terms of r not but in terms of this r okay so that's what the geometric representation i have written r plus vsv is equal to ct so the value of r in the final step that i would uh, substitute would be c minus vs into t so two important uh, calculations we did one about the c minus vs into t and whereas this width to be c minus vs into dt okay so in dt seconds the power in this shaded region so okay, i'll just shade it for you in the diagram in this shaded region the power uh, for dt seconds was emitted so the energy that would be encompassed would be pdt and this pdt would crash through this observer or it will uh, pierce through the observer uh, in some particular amount of time he's at rest please understand he will be at rest uh, so he will take some time to digest this particular amount of spherical energy so the intensity detected i i can like in the previous situation is the power per unit area that is detected so uh, energy this would be joules divided by area on which these joules are uh, associated i think area is this one it is spread over this area okay so that would be simply 4 pi r not square and that into 1 by time right so because energy per unit area per unit time so how much is the time taken right so 1 divided by time time is this distance would be going through him in with a velocity of sound okay so because he is not moving right so he will just have that velocity of sound taking the sound through his detection okay so distance by velocity is the time okay so what is the distance we just now saw in this diagram it is c minus vs into dt that is the distance and it would be covered because of a velocity which is by c so i hope you understand i have written one by time so this is distance by the speed with which that is covered so one by time so this is what the expression is going to be not yet finally a uh, ripe expression so we need to make some adjustments so dt gets cancelled and answer should not be in r naught so i'll substitute r naught is ct here right so this this i'll substitute it off here and that would make it uh, in this would be p by 4 pi okay right and uh, r naught is c square t square so one c will get cancelled with this there would be a c here and there would be a t square into c minus vs okay this is the time to recall this expression here so we are desperate to write the answer in terms of r square right so r square means i need a c minus vs and into t whole square so what i'll do is i'll multiply and divide with that term so can you see that because i am desperate to get that term i'm going to multiply and divide so i have put a term on the top and i have squared it at the bottom okay so that would make our job now easier okay so can you see that this square term that you have is nothing but r naught square that square term at the top of the page can you see r square is this square so i'll have that r square here and the c comes here and gives you the final expression so the minus in the final answer that we have is not telling us that the intensity is reduced it's just because the answer is being represented in terms of this distance r which is not the radius of the wave front that this fellow will receive okay so that is the catch there answer is perfectly all right that is given in the book so 4 pi r square and then you have that 1 minus vs divided by i'm bringing this white c into this right so i'll just write it in the same color so that you can gather that one okay so that's this is the required answer okay so thanks for watching and uh, please do wait for the part three of this video which would be coming out very soon okay and that would be a real blast because both observer and the source would be moving i think by now even though that's the difficult question if you have followed the part a and part b and the way we have generated the calculations i think uh, part uh, c even though it's tougher would be easily seen through so that i would urge in this meantime to go back to part a and part b and watch it and be ready for the part c of the video okay right thanks for watching and meet you in the part 3 of the video.